Alrighty guys, tis I Chrissy Girl. Welcome to part 24 of my Lego Harry Potter years 5 to 7 playthrough. And we're about to begin year 7. I kind of cut out a little bit of me being outside in Diagon Alley. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> Things are a lot darker in Deathly Hallows part 1. Diagon Alley is now littered with rain and it's... It's just really dark. There's Death Eaters hanging around. You know, Voldemort's really in charge. And things are starting to get a bit spooky now. So it's up to us to hunt the Horcruxes down and stop him. Um, off screen, um, without recording it, I actually bought the red bricks. Um, the abilities, that is to say. Um, score times four and the other one. Um studs magnet which draws studs around you know magnetizes studs towards you when they're slightly further away handy little ability to have yeah i kind of like the uh whole notion of harry and ron being confused over you know pitching a tent kind of fits with the theme but includes mm. a lego humor to it mm. But anyway, there's actually a level which, you know, part of this level actually takes place at Privet Drive. Um, and I kind of think that's cool. It's the first, you know, it's a first for the Lego Harry Potter games. Going into the Dursley home. That's a bit rude, locking Ron and Hermione outside. Who knows what they might get up to. So the plan is for five other people to take Polyjuice, no, six other people to take Polyjuice Potion um, and basically turn into Harry. All to confuse Death Eaters that just might happen to be flying around. They think Harry's moving at a different date, but yeah, he's actually moving tonight. This is the last time Harry will ever see the Dursleys' home. And I bet part of him's thinking, good riddance. <laughs> so there's a few things to manipulate in the Dursleys' home. Just, yeah, uh, there's three um, portraits hanging around. And I'm pretty sure you can get something out of manipulating all of them. Um, just bash the trees up. Uh oh plant not trees um, all the ingredients can be found in the house but if you head outside you can get a few things like a, there's a student in peril out in the back garden which you can access can't really go this way so if you're interested in all that extra stuff like collecting studs and stuff like that um, feel free to head out into the back garden which I will do in a minute but all the potions ingredients are in here, so if that's what you're after, you just want to get straight on to the next part of the level. No faffing around collecting things, no studs, no nothing like that. Um, and you won't need to worry so much, because they're all in here. Um, year 7, part 1, took 6 parts. Um, it's 6 parts long. Um, which... Beats um, Half Blood Prince and um, Order of the Phoenix out, definitely. It didn't take anywhere near as long to get through this particular part of the story. Which is kind of good. Ah. <sighs> You'll um, have an arrow constantly telling you to go indoors, but stuff it, I'm going to explore out here. First and last time I'm ever going to be in the Dursley's house, why the hell not? Over here in this shed you'll find the student in peril, but unfortunately where you are actually in a level, the student's not going to give you any studs. The shed will though, because the shed's cool. Yeah, get out of my way. 
I wonder what a random student from Hogwarts would be doing in Little Winging anyway. Is it Little Winging or Little Winging? I don't know. But what would they be doing in the Dursleys' house? It's a bit random, unless they've come to get Harry's autograph or something. But anyway, you probably already noticed that my um, goat, my um, stud meter is nearly full. And that's due to the power of the times four upgrade. Everything's just multiplied by four, so it doesn't take anywhere near as long to get true wizard rating. In fact, it's actually in some cases I would say it's almost mandatory to have it. If you want to get true wizard rating. But that's just me. I think that should be it. For the garden. We should be able to uh, make a move and... Get on to the next segment of the stage. So... Oh, I forgot about this. Smashy, smashy! <laughs> so, I recently, um... I got some DVDs recently. Um, season 1 of Mega Man, aka A Hero is Born. That particular DVD set. Based on the old series of Mega Man on TV. Mm. Um... And I also bought Digimon Data Squad, which arrived very quickly. It arrived today. Um, all four collections, so that's the whole entire season. I haven't watched Data Squad yet. I am a fan of the Digimon series. Um, particularly when I was younger, I used to be obsessed with it. I used to come charging home from school every day just to watch it. I even used to record it. Who knew how valuable that would become, because there would be no box sets released of seasons 1 to 3. Or 4, for that matter. <laughs> oh, Hagrid. We're going to have a slight delayed getaway. But yeah, I... I grew up on Seasons 1 to 3, aka Digimon Adventure, Adventure Zero 2, and Tamers. Um, I didn't get to see Frontier until a lot later. And I've bought the series, um... I've bought the Data Squad series. This will be my first time watching it when I eventually get around to it. So that's kind of cool. I did see brief little bits of Cross Wars on YouTube, particularly the scene where um, all the leaders come back. Fantastic, it really brought me back to my childhood. I do faff around a lot here, I do apologise. Um, it's blatantly obvious where all the pieces are hidden. One of them is in the bin, which is near the front, and you need Hagrid to get into it. But, due to my epic failness, I wander around for ages before I actually notice the poxy thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's just me. It takes me forever to notice anything. I'm bloody useless. Uh, can't dig anything up because I have no animals with me. Um, and yeah, I'm just... <laughs> yeah, just zapping around. When I... When I, um... I'm completely useless and don't notice what's straight in front of me. I just zap everything. Uh, but, but two of the pieces are easily found, I will admit that. Um, as for the Harry Potter films, I think, I think this one was kind of not my favourite, but it wasn't too bad at the same time. I wouldn't rank it as highly as part two or Goblet of Fire, though. But I did enjoy it. Definitely Hallows as a book was my favourite book in the series. Yeah, I'm, I'm really getting annoyed now by my failness. <laughs> and I'm surprised the neighbours don't actually come charging out at the, you know... Uh, hearing their car is beeping like a loony. <laughs> beeping like crazy and no one's coming out to notice the vandalism that's taken place. Oh yes, Harry's certainly a vandal, alright. 
Perhaps that St. Brutus's school would have been a nice second option for him. I still can't believe I still ain't noticed that. Oh, that stupid bin. Stupid me. Notice the bin. Yeah, like I say, the free parts are easy to find. It's just that I'm absolutely bloody useless, useless at noticing what's right in front of me. I don't know what happened there. But anyway... Come on, Hagrid. Pull on it. Pull! Thank you. That's where the last one is. Okay. Let's go! Let's get away from this place before any Death Eaters turn up. <laughs> Holy crud nuggets! How did they know we were going to be up here tonight? Well, looks like somebody has uh, betrayed us and handed over information to Voldemort saying that we're uh, trying to escape tonight and not later. Anyway, this segment is relatively straightforward. If you remember the broomstick segment um, in the first level of Order of the Phoenix, um, it's automated. And you can see the awesomeness of the stud magnet ability in action. It's picking up on studs that I would not normally be able to pick up, especially the blue and purple ones. Which is awesome, because it means I can stick to generally stick to the middle of the road, and it will pick up any studs practically on the road, which is great. I'm surprised that there are loads of people driving their cars, and no one has noticed the flying, spooked out figures on broomsticks. <laughs> Unless they've cast some kind of spell to make them invisible. Ah, this this particular point. This particular point is kind of interesting and funny in that, but... Holy crap, it's Voldemort. In the, um... <laughs> see what I mean, funny? Um... That particular scene always, um... Always kind of um, choked me up a little bit when I read the book, particularly the first time. I was very choked up at the death of Hedwig, Harry's owl. I actually didn't expect that death at all, to be honest with you. But then again, I didn't expect Albus Dumbledore to die. I didn't expect Sirius to die. Ah. <sighs> So anyway, this is um, Rufus Grimjaw, the guy who took over for Cornelius. Oh, Voldemort's not back, Fudge! Um, he's handing out contents of Dumbledore's Will, which is Tales of Beetle the Bard, a book for Hermione, um, a Deluminator for Ron, and for Harry, the snitch he caught in his first Quidditch match. Supposedly, they were also meant to receive the... Um, Sword of Gryffindor, but they turned around and said, "Oh, it's not Dumbledore's to give away." Tossers. <laughs> but anyway, there are two new concepts that, that can now be brought in to the gameplay. Um, the first up is Ron, which for some reason I didn't notice the other light. Okay, Ron has the ability to use a the Deluminator which is exclusive to him, he can carry light from one location to another and this is this turns out to be very handy. Um, for a lot of the stages. However, there is one slight downside. The Deluminator replaces Lumo Solem for Ron. So if you want to use Lumo Solem, you have to switch to either Harry or Hermione because Ron can no longer use it. The second new addition Hermione's bag. If you stand on these purpley pink spaces, Hermione can whip into a bag and grab an item, which will help you proceed um, in the way that you need to. So, yeah, that's basically it so far. Anyway, it's Bill and Flo's wedding. 
And Ron is stuffing his face once more. That seems to be a thing, I think. Ron's stuffing his face all the time. And that gentleman there is Xenophilius Lovegood, Luna Lovegood's father. But there's no time for pleasantries now. Dementors are attacking. Ah, oh, Dementors. Death Eaters! Damn it! But anyway, yeah, Death Eaters are going to be cropping up now and then. Sometimes an Order member will appear as well and battle with the Death Eater. But sometimes they won't and you'll have to take them out. Because otherwise they're just going to keep firing shots at you. And it's going to be annoying. Um, relatively straightforward as part of the stage. Um, just go with the flow, put the flames out to move, proceed on to another area. That sort of shtick. So, obviously I'm going to need Ron for the Weasley box. Yay, fireworks! Let's make the flames worse! <laughs> Okay. I don't think that actually contributed to anything. I can see the spectre specs or something over there, but I'm not quite sure how to get to them at the moment. And I don't really need to go over there anyway to beat the stage. Okay. Oh, it's a cloud. How original. Okay, that sorts that out. Um, yeah, just keep proceeding on. I don't really have much to say at the moment. I'm just... I'm kind of winging it like I usually do, but... I don't know. There are three of them... Them things that can be blasted, the things you just built. Is that Xenophilius Lovegood? I don't think he was a member of the Order of the Phoenix. He's just some weirdo who writes a weird magazine. Hi, vey. Oh, there's a pink space, so obviously need to use Hermione's bag. I find Aquamenti a very good spell to sort Death Eaters out. So it's manual aiming. That sorts that flaming stuff out. Oh, why did I do that? Yeah, only Hermione can use the bag. I find it kind of neat how when she's using the bag, Death Eaters can't attack her. That's cool. So, I need to pick this apart. It's kind of finicky a little bit. Smash it to bits, thank you. Okay. I need to hover it over the fire. Kind of obvious by the sparkling thing over there, but... Oh well, again, me missing the obvious. Hi, Ve. Okay. Yeah, these things, if you smash them up, you get a crap ton of studs. And if you smash three of them, well, you get something out of it. I don't know if I go after the third or not. I don't even know where, remember where the third one is. Okay. Another Hermione's bag moment. I'm also, it look, also looks like I'm going to need to use the Deluminator as well. It's a good way of incorporating both the upgrades. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I'm still collecting studs. I've beaten my... I've got my total. Oh, there it is. There's the last one. 
wasn't too far away at all. I swear, these are the only one. These are the only three that's left in the tent from the get. You know, the ho wedding guests, and just they're idiots. They're the ones that's most wanted, and they're the only ones that haven't left. <laughs> Come on, Ronald. That's another annoying thing about the Deluminator. It takes a while to start. You, don't, you can't instantaneously use it. You have to wait a second or two. Oh, crud, it's Bellatrix. That crazy bitch popping out of a cake. Speaking of cake, Ronald. <laughs> but yeah, that's the first level of Year 7, Part 1. And it's not too bad. Has a bit of everything in it. <laughs> and it was nice to actually be able to play in a, you know, a level in the Dursley's house, even if it didn't take up the whole level, but still not too bad. Yeah. So, Harry, Ron and Hermione have fled, and they're on the run from Voldemort while hunting Horcruxes. What perils shall they encounter? What terrible times must they endure? Well, we're about to find out in this playthrough. Stay tuned for the next part.